Unit testing. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, I love those. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll turn this one to you. Uh, when is and isn't it worth it? For an example, hmm. if I had a function that returns an array of raycast hits based on a pattern of rays, would you test it? Um. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I'm trying to find it so I can... Okay, here it is. If I have a function that returns an array of raycast hits based on a pattern of rays that you give it, I mean, basically, um, when it's worth it to test is when it's fast and there's low overhead. I, I mean, the easy answer would be like, oh, it's always it's always worth it to, to unit test, which obviously is not true. I mean, there are cases where um, it's not worth it. I would say you want to test your business rules. Absolutely. And I mean, business rules, we're, ta we're, we're a bunch of game developers. So basically, your main game mechanics are the rules of your game, the fundamental rules of your game world, the things that um, can be messed up by another developer, you want to make sure that you test those things. It's kind of a broad way to say that, but you want to expound on that, Jason? Yeah, um, one thing I would say you're too- so, You're is... so good at like getting down into the, um, I, I offer the, the umbrella and you go in there and you hit the details. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I, I... I guess I'll take that as a compliment. Um, I, I will say, with, with those kinds of um, systems, the, the answer is, if it's hard to test, if it's if it gets to the point where you're having trouble testing it, then don't test it. I mean, it may sound like a hand-wavy answer, but the fact of the matter is, when you think about what a Raycast is, a Raycast is a collaborator. It's something you're working with. It's not something you wrote. Mm. So don't test code that exists. Test code that you write. Um, and so in the case of how do I test Raycasts, you don't. You test if X system has been given a collection of raycast hits and they're all returning vector three zero, this happens. If I return them back and one of the vectors is pointing left and one of them pointing right, this happens. You don't have to test specifically that the raycasts work. You have to test that a system when given inputs performs as you expect it to. Um, and then you could have another system which tests, hey, uh, if I run this code, does it give me back, um, if, if I hand it raycasts, does it give me back raycast um, hits? You don't need to test specifically that in this set case, this thing happened to match this exact input. Just test that it does what you expect it to do. And realistically, you only need to test the um, critical paths in your system. Like arbitrarily, te arbitrarily testing that raycasts happen doesn't really get you anywhere. Yeah. Testing that a raycast, if, if a raycast has hit something, it should change color. Test if I fake a raycast hitting it, will it still change color? That way you're testing the actual logic of your application. And presumably if the raycasting system works as it by just actively creating raycasts and the thing that receives raycasts works by receiving a raycast, you know, if so fact so, the two will work together and they'll just sort of do what they're supposed to. There's integration tests as well, and that's more mm -hmm. of a user experience thing. At the end of it, once you have a system working together, you can integrate test the two. But realistically, like test that it works. You don't need to test the nitty gritty. And that's kind of a big problem with a lot of unit testing sort of die hard attitudes and I want to really point that out we're we're, we're not going to, to tow the company line and say everyone needs the unit test all the time <laughs> but what we're going to say is unit test when it's practical yes. and the kinds of things I unit test would be a health system a stat system uh, I would test that a selection system would work I may feed the selection system a raycast to make the selections and I may have a selection system that can perform highlights and I'll feed the highlight system into shader changing color or um, objects firing do tween events, but I won't be testing that do tween event fire and I won't be testing that raycast fire. I will test my code, which says given these inputs, does these outputs happen correctly, you know? Yeah, like uh, for instance, let's say you have a, a game world where you have a player that walks around, there's, a, there's some spikes on the floor and when you walk on the spikes, you damage the player. I wouldn't go to the trouble of setting all that up in a test and trying to test that the the on trigger gets called and uh, damage occurs. I would test the function, which probably would be like player dot take damage, and I would I would test all the rules that c correspond to that particular function. Like for instance, it can't go below zero, or that function cannot accept a negative number. Um, you know, like. If you had like, let's say a, a spike object in your world where that would damage the player and it had a serialized field that anyone could edit from the editor, I mean, you don't know what's going in that field. It could be a negative number. So you say, okay, I'm just, all I know is that I've unit tested my player dot take damage function and it does not accept negative numbers. And so uh, you're covering your, you're covering your bases there. I wouldn't say to test the mono behavior and make sure that no one, uh, 
puts negative numbers there just because it's just not worth it. Um, and, and that goes back to what we mentioned earlier about separating your unity code from your, you know, your just basic C sharp code, the fundamental code code that makes up your game, you know, like core library code, if you will. Um, you don't know what, you don't always know what unity is going to do. You don't, you don't always know what a designer is going to do with your code. He, you know, he, someone might grab a mono behavior, put it on some game object and in a way that you never would have planned for. So what's important is to get down to your fundamental code and make sure that at least that's guarded and worry about uh, the, the worst thing you'll have to worry about is that that game designer will run the game and what they expected to happen didn't happen. But what won't happen is that your code won't fundamentally break. The player will not go below zero, which is a fundamentally incorrect thing to happen in, in pretty much any game, I would think. Um, so that's basically, that's kind of the, the thought process you need to have when you, when you get to a decision point, you're like, should I test this? Well, just, you need to ask yourself, is this fundamental? Like, is it acceptable for, for this thing to break? Um, and something like player's health going below zero is, is not acceptable. Yeah. And, and kind of a second point on that is, um, you know, if you're being very pragmatic about your code, um, like I used to be particularly dogmatic on the idea. I liked the idea of 100% test code coverage and having these really swanky suite of tests that I can run constantly and prove that every line of code is ran beautifully. And um, <laughs> so idealistic. Get, yeah, exactly. It just it's not practical. It doesn't scale. It takes forever. Um, your team will hate you if you keep doing this and keep pushing the agenda. And uh, oh yeah, you end up getting into this really muddy situation where your your code is so reliant on tests that all your tests break every time you change. Like there's a lot of things that can go wrong. And this. And this is from someone saying you should be unit testing. Like I'm not saying don't do it. I am saying be very cognizant of what the problems are. And the way you mitigate those is you choose good tests to write. And on top of that, you you are testing the cases that can go wrong, that can cause the most harm. So if you can find a way to mitigate that harm, you can solve that other side too. So uh, a very common thing that I'll do is I, I write custom inspectors for anything I expect the designer to play with. Like I don't let them use a, a specter I haven't customized in some way. You can use Odin if you don't want to write them yourself. Uh, you can use the straightforward, um, the the attributes for just the basic stuff like ranges and whatever else. Uh, or just read up on the onValidate function. That alone will make a lot of your life easier. Uh, but the long and short of it all is make sure that you can't get bad inputs. If you write an editor inspector such that only valid values can be written into it, then you have a lot less problem to worry about in your testing. So in general, just make a point of ensuring that, because there's, there's a common phrase, garbage in, garbage out. Like you can't, you can't recover a system that's been given gibberish to work with. Like you have to give it good data and give out good data, hopefully. So <laughs> in, in general, yeah. So just make, make it work, make it work well. Make sure that you can't get too many odd cases. And then you don't need to test as much. And that stuff you are testing should be stuff that's bottleable that you can put on a small container, test it like a black box. And like literally it's called black box testing if I'm going to get very specific. But yeah, you, you literally go down the road of testing your inputs and outputs and that'll cover the majority of your test related problems, you know? Yeah. Um, Vakaral says there's, there's no way of testing if animations work, right? I don't, I don't mean is animation exactly like as planned, but is animation doing anything at all and reacting um, to something? Not that I know of, but yeah. again, like it, it's an unsatisfying answer, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> like realistically, obviously at some point you're going to have to go into the editor and make sure it works, but you shouldn't really be testing that it works. Cause at the end of the day, the animation system is a third party system that receives events. They should be testing it. You know, unity technology should be testing it and I'm sure they do. Yeah.